Everything to me is always the script, but it, it, to me it, it doesn't really feel like um, there was a gap between in a way because I was directing in the theatre during that period and also busily either on stage myself or um, on film uh, and specifically with Harry Potter at one point which you know it starts out with three films and you don't know there's going to be any more and then suddenly you kind of don't have a life every seven every year for seven weeks so I just wasn't physically able to direct a film you've got to have more than a year uh, at your disposal uh, and so the script had been with me through a lot of that period which was turned out to be a good thing it meant that Alison Deegan and I could you know I came over here uh, went and stayed in um, Galway I think it was uh, and then in Dublin and then she came over to London we were kind of able to work at it gradually but it was always the quality of her writing and the freshness and the daring of it really because it's yeah it's a period film and it takes place in a you know the time of the court of Louis the 14th so that existed but then she injects it with all sorts of absolute f fan not fantasies but fancies of her own so it becomes like looking at um, history through a kind of prism so hopefully it's in period costume but it's hopefully to me anyway very modern well, you know, as an actor or a director, you're the sum of your experiences and you don't know where you, where does your imagination come from, what feeds it, partly what you read, partly what you learn, but partly your circumstances. Um, so yeah, in as much as, to, you know, to me my early life is just what it was, like everybody's childhood, it's your reality, you don't kind of you don't kind of project yourself into another one. You're too busy dealing with the life you have. Well, the script is the the brainchild and uh, birth child of Alison Deegan. Uh, you know, she, as I said, we worked on it here and there. Uh, she's um, now happily in Wicklow and continuing to write away, but uh, this was her first script. Uh, so there's the genesis of all these energies coming together. Joan Bergen did the clothes and uh, I've now worked with her four times. You get not just a costume designer, but you get a philosopher on the set with Joan. Uh, Kathy Belton, brilliant actress, thank God said yes to playing um, Kate's maid. So a bit of a triumvirate, never mind the, um, the workshop that Joan has here in Dublin that made the clothes. Ireland's very special to me, you know, I, I had an Irish grandmother that I never knew, so it's like meeting a bit of your past every time I come here. It, when I came here for the first time, it was, uh, you know, you can get very romantic about these things, but it was like coming somewhere I knew. Uh, you know, and if you're a Celt, and my other half of my family is Welsh, so if you're a Celt, you recognize each other. It's like a homing device. I had a good bit of advice from Ray Fiennes, I think it was, who said, because um, he had done The Invisible Woman, and. He said, be careful that you give yourself enough takes because the danger is if you're, you feel embarrassed about taking another take because you're the director and we should be moving on to the proper actors. Um, I'm not sure whether I fulfilled that, but um, it's, I was helped by the fact that Louis XIV is in many ways a kind of you know, the waiting for the movie industry to be invented because then he'd become some mogul or movie director, action movie director or something. Uh, so there's a kind of watchfulness about him as well as the control freakery uh, and the creative spirit. So in a way, I kept thinking of him as a movie director. That helped. You have the same, some, you know, I either experience gives you the opportunity of feeling that you got closer to the center of uh, what the writer was asking for. I'm not sure. And you have to remember that when you're on film, uh, yeah, there's, it might be just you and one other actor, but there'll be a hundred people the other side of the camera. So there's a real sense of an audience listening, watching. Uh, and I think when, when there's a take that everybody agrees, uh, you know, it's time to move on. Uh, there's a collective understanding of that. I don't know why, but you know, it's like you know, a bell gets hit. 
in terms of everybody's energy. That's quite similar to the theatre. But of course, in the theatre, you're much more in control. Nobody says cut. Um, and you screw up in one sentence, sentence, you know you can repair the damage in a minute. Uh, and he, yeah, it, it's the obvious stuff, really. You know, if you've got a full house, that helps, because um, then the equation's right. Um, and if they're laughing, that's a great validation, because not at gags, but out of recognition. That's what I love, just hearing laughter in a theatre where we've all shared a knowledge about um, human beings.